Hey there kids, uh, welcome to another homework video. This is for Eureka Math, Grade 5, Module 1, Lesson 8. And it's um, kind of more the same of Lesson 7 using those really interesting, and I'm sure math people think fabulous vertical number lines. And uh, I am not a fan, pretty sure you know that. Um, if you have not watched any of my problem set videos, please go watch the problem set video for lesson eight. It will help you as I'm talking about the strategies I'm using. And I'm also gonna use that fun vertical number line so you can see uh, what to do just in case you get tested on it, which I feel like standards wise in California, uh, we're not gonna be tested heavily on it. Rounding is kind of a, uh, a standard that's not very heavily tested. We do compatible numbers and we do some estimating, but um, it's, I like to use the old fashioned thing. Oh my God, there's a fly in here, ugh, yuck. Okay, anyway, sorry, back to it. Let's jump in. Uh, we're rounding any given decimal to any place value using place value understanding and the vertical number line. So we gotta push this number line, ugh. Write the decomposition that helps you. You know what helps me? Putting it in a box. And then round to the given place value. I can put any numbers in a box and round to the given place value much faster than the number line. Draw number lines to explain your thinking. Ew, but we'll do it. Circle the rounded value on each number line. This is kind of what you have to do to show your answer. Some kids will do all that work and they have that vertical number line and then they forget to circle the answer. And I'm like, well, the whole point is to get the rounded answer, which is either on the top or the bottom. So uh, don't forget to do that. So here we have a pretty big decimal, 43 and 586 thousandths. They want us to round it to three different place value position which means three different vertical number lines. Draw three. Give each one the place value position that you're uh, rounding to. So let's say tenth, hundredth, and I'm gonna abbreviate, so there you go, and one. And you know that each vertical number line has the number we're starting at, the midpoint, which has the five in the next place value position, and the plus one. Okay, so that's probably the easiest part of this. And then I'm gonna show you my strategy, which is to box the numbers in the rounding place and the helping position. It's gonna look like this, rounding place, helper. Okay, so if we have 43.586, 0.586, and we're rounding to the nearest tenth place. This is the rounding column, tenths. This is the helping number, put it in a box. 58 is closest to which 10? Yep, 60. So when rounding, this would become a zero and we're not gonna fiddle with this over here unless we have a nine and then we have to do like a plus one and a plus one and it kind of bumps it over. Watch out for the ones that are like nine, 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 five. So that'll kind of throw you off a little bit. Um, so anyway, how many tenths, and this is the decomposition that should help you, how many tenths do we have? So looking at the number, looking at the tenths, if we put the squeeze on this, it would be 435 tenths. Plus one, 436. So when we actually have the, the real number, in the, in the last lesson I said, okay, you can put what you're labeling it, 435 tenths, 436 tenths. But another thing that you have to really pay attention to is what do I have with my decimal? Because some kids are forgetting to put the decimal back in. So we have actually 43.5, okay? So it would be 43.5 or 43.6, and that's gonna be your final answer. So go ahead and write that in standard form today so you can get used to doing it. So what would be the midpoint? It's gonna be everything you had at the bottom, 43.5, and the five from the next place value position. So it's 43, five tenths, and like we did in the previous lesson, and five of the next one, which is five hundredths. So the and five, I'm putting it right here in standard form, five hundredths, 43.55, okay? If I had a zero here, and a zero here, I've got 50, 55, 60. Another strategy that can help you kind of see what's happening. Now you need to plot your actual number on the number line. 
So we have 43.586. So 43.58. Eight is the helping number. So it's 58. If this is 50 and this is a number line, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, here is our number 59 and 60. If your number's on the top, you're looking at anything in this top section from here up, rounding up. So your rounded answer is going to be this one. So now it's in standard form. We don't have to write it again. Yesterday, yesterday or in the previous lesson on 7, we were doing kind of a writing a lot. I wanted you guys to see, hey, this is the unit form. But this is the standard form, and you can do a little bit less work if you are just um, writing the standard form to begin with. Okay. Now I want you to notice that all the math geniuses who have the vertical number line and all this talking and thinking, you could have gotten the same answer if you put a box around the rounding place and the helping number and you're done. This is the same answer right here that I got here. Why do I have an extra zero here? It's irrelevant. I could have a zero there if I wanted to. Put a zero here and a zero here. It's all the same. Okay? So I like to say my way is better. And I'm just going to keep saying that when we do this type of rounding. Okay, 43.586 again. And this time we're rounding to the nearest hundredths place. So if this is the hundredths place, got to know your place value positions. Put a box, okay, helping number. 86 rounds to what? 90. It's that easy. And I would be done, okay? So this is our old-fashioned work, and yes, we can round that way. Let's do it the vertical number line way and see how much more fun we can have this way. So if I'm rounding 43.586 to the nearest hundredths and I put the squeeze all the way to my hundredths, how many do I have? I have 4358 plus 1, 4359. Midpoint, and again, where's my standard form? Decimal, decimal, so 43.58. Five. Go to the next place value position. Put a five. Okay. And again, if you do those sprints for lesson seven, find the midpoint. Really great tool to use to prepare for lessons seven and eight. Now we have our number line and we have to put our actual number on the number line. So we're taking our 43.586 and I've got 43.580 and zero. So I've got uh, 43.58, There it is. 43.586, right there on the upper half. Get my little red pencil. Anything up here is going to round up. I don't even have to count the 7, 8, and 9 if I don't want to because I know my answer is going to go round up. Circle the rounded value on each number line. Circle, circle. Last one, 43.586. This time we're rounding to the nearest ones place. No place value, know your place value positions so that you can identify the rounding place and the helping number. 35 would round to what? 40. Anything with a five goes up. The math people said, just do that, okay? So my final rounded answer should look like this, 44. But let's do it the vertical way. So we have how many ones? I have 43 ones if I put the squeeze on, plus one, 44. And literally here is where we would put the 43.5, because it really is 0.5. And that's our halfway point. So we do have our number that is 43.586. The only thing we really need is the 0.5. This is where you put your um, dot on the number line and anything with a 5 goes up. So, get the red pencil. Blah, blah, blah. Move up. Circle your answer. Okay? I hope that is helpful. Now we have a longer number also rounding to several positions. This time we have four of them. Ooh, that's fine. Get away. Blah. Gross. Okay. One... Two, three, this is going to be harder to squeeze everything in, and four.
This one's going to be tenths or tenth, hundredth. I'm abbreviating. Ten, the whole number, and hundred, the whole number. Okay? Bottom, middle, top. Do this. Bottom, middle, top. Bottom, middle, top. Bottom, middle, top. Take our number and let's start with tenths on the left here. And how many uh, tenths do I have? We're here with eight tenths. So the putting the squeeze on is including all of these up to that column. Two, four, three, eight. Plus one. Two, four, three, nine. What is our halfway point? And again, where's the decimal? 243, 243. What's the halfway? 243.85. If you want to see that, that you're comparing, it's going to be the 80, 85, 90. That's how you know how to put this thing on the number line. Also, 243.875. Rounding to the nearest tenth is this one. Put a box around it. 87 should round to 90. That's going to be my expected outcome. I can simply do that. So let's go back to the number line. If we have um, the actual number, 243.87, that is above 85. 8687, plot the point, round up. Okay, next one. Let's, I don't need to do the shading. I'm just doing that for you, but let's go faster. So for the hundredth, how many hundredths do I have? Two, okay, I'm just gonna, it's gonna squeeze in, sorry. 243.875 to the nearest hundredth place, tenths, hundredths, hundredths. That means that the thousandths is the helping number. 75, five is in the middle, five says just Bump it up, add one, it should be the expected outcome to go up to 80. So how many hundredths do I have if I squeeze them all together? Two, four, three, point eight, seven, plus one, two, four, three, point eight, eight. In the middle, two, four, three, point eight, seven, five, seventy, seventy-five, eighty. Okay, now what do we actually have? Well, we have the 875, which is right here in the middle. Plot your point, fives go up, circle your rounded answer. Next one, tens, take your number, two, four, three, eight, seven, five. Find the tens place, helping numbers to the right, put a box around it. Where do you expect 43 to go? 43 will round down. 43 is below the midpoint. The whole idea behind the vertical number line is to find the midpoint. Okay, so if I have how many tens, I have 24. Plus one is 25. The number in the middle is gonna be the next place value position. Now you can't do the 0.5 because it's not tenths. This is 24 tens for a total value of 240. This is 25 tens for a total value of 250. So in between them, the midpoint is going to have a five in the ones for 245. Then what do we actually have? We have 243, one, two, three, dot here. We're on the lower. This was upper, round up, upper, round up, upper, middle, round up, upper, round up, middle, round up. Finally, we have something on the lower end. This is below the 245. If it was 45, it has to go up. So if it's 44 or lower and it is 43, it has to go down. So circle the 240, which is what we had expected. Oops, I didn't finish that. 43 goes to 40 and that would be your expected outcome. Last one on here, 100. So how many hundreds do we have? We've got our 243.875 with two hundreds. And how many tens in the helping place? That's gonna be four. So how many hundreds? 200 plus one, 300. What's in the middle of 200 and 300? 250 with the five tens. How many do I actually have? I have 24. There goes that fly again. If I had my fly swatter. 
Okay, so 240 is right here, 243. Um, it doesn't even matter about the three, it's about the four. The four is below, we round down. 24 rounds to 20, and then that would be your rounded answer down below 200. Okay, so hopefully you can see all that. I know it gets a little crunchy in there, but uh, 24 to 20, and again, the box method is just super, super easy and clear and fast. So I really encourage that we kind of leave these vertical number lines behind in my classroom. So if your teacher really wants you to use the vertical number lines, I hope this video will help you. Click subscribe and come back again. No, I'm not done. We're going to finish up. A trip from New York City to Seattle is 2,852 and one-tenth miles. A family wants to make the drive in 10 days. Driving the same number of miles each day. I don't know about hotels, but that might be difficult. But anyway, about how many miles will they drive each day? Notice it says about, so at some point we're going to be rounding. Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a mile, but we have to get the answer first. So if I have 28, uh, sorry, 2,852 and one tenth, I have to divide it into the 10 days. Each day they're going to have a separate little chunk. It won't be this. So you have to divide first. 2852.1. And it's divided into 10 days. So the first step is to think about how to split that. Now this goes back to day one, lesson one. Because you can divide any number by 10 by shifting the place value positions. I'm taking this and I'm going to move the digits because I'm dividing to lower place value positions by one space. Some people will say, well, if I move the decimal left, then I get the 285. And I'm saying, yes, you can, or you can shift the digits all one place to the right. So you end up with 285.21 miles per day. But this is what I'm supposed to round to the nearest tenth of a mile. So tenth is here. Remember, rounding place helping number. My rounded answer using the box method is this, that easy, 21 rounds to 20. If you needed to make a vertical number line and do that whole business, then you would say, how many tenths do I have? 2852 plus 1, don't forget your decimal between the 5 and the 2, plus 1, 2853, and the halfway, 2852, 5, and this would be 20, 25, 30. And where does it actually live? It's at 21. So that would round down to here, and we got that already up here so much faster. So uh, they will travel about, remember we're rounding, 285 and 2 tenths miles per day. Don't forget to include your written answer, put a nice circle, make it nice and clear. Okay, backside is a little bit different, but I hope you guys are still hanging in there because this is actually probably the most important part of the lesson, okay? I know this is tested. I know it's tested on many different sites, many avenues. If you take MAP, great. I'm thinking on iReady, it's probably gonna be there. I bet even on the state test, it's gonna be there. So listen up. We're talking about the range where you can kind of round a number up or down. And so it's all about this maximum possible value and then the minimum possible value, okay? So let's check it out. A decimal number has two digits to the right of its decimal point. Any, any number, any number. If we round it to the nearest tenth, so think of tens, and tenth right here, tenth, the result is 18 and 6 tenths. So here is your number rounded, okay? It has been rounded. What is the maximum possible value of this number? So what does that mean? It means that before I rounded it, 
I had a different number because as we round them, they change. We get like zeros on the end. And so what could it have been before? Now remember that when you round, you have the rounding place and the helping number or the helping digit. There's the rounding digit and the helping digit. And they're the only two that I ever put in the box. Okay. Now what they're saying is this is where we rounded to, to the nearest tenth. If this was the tenths place and they got 18.6, that there was a helping number there before. And so we're talking about the maximum possible number of the helper or the minimum possible number of the helper on these questions. Okay. So what is the maximum possible number value of this number? If I was looking at this on a vertical number line and we rounded eight, 18 point something, 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 something to 18.6, what's the most it could have been? Well, if it has come down, then I could have only had 18.61, 0 0.62, 0 0.63, 0 0.64. Okay, because between the 60 and the 70, then my midpoint was 18.65. But what happens when you get to 18.65? You have to go up. So the maximum possible value of the number would be 18.64, max value. Okay, because use words and number line. Okay, well, they gave us the number line, thank you. And then here is kind of a brief explanation, but the words that you really have to put is, each time you round, you'll have a range of nine places. <laughs> a range of nine places, as you know, nine digits. And so it really matters. Like if I'm up here at the top, this can go down. But also, if this is still the same 18.6 or 18 and 6 tenths, this is still the same number. What's the minimum possible value? If 18.64 is the max, what's the minimum? Because it could be lower than this and get rounded up. Well, I just mentioned if the 65 had to go up to 70, we have to go back down below the 60 in order to find the minimum possible value. So what would be below 60? Well, we'd have 59, 58, 57, 56, and 55. Because here is 50 and here is 60. So the minimum possible value would be this one because it could then go up. So I hope this makes sense. Every time you round something, you've got the five and up and the four and below. It's a range. And so you've got this, this whole range where you can end up at that middle 10. This is what I would call that middle 10. Okay, so we use the number line and it says use words, pictures, or numbers, but it's really the same. I wanna want you to write a little something anything down to 18.55 could be rounded to 18.6. Okay, so that includes 0 0.56, 0 0.57, 0 0.58, 0 0.59. And the upper part is going to be the 0.61 would go down, 0.62 would go down, 0.63 would go down, all the way up to 64. So I hope this is helpful. This is very important. I hope you guys get it. Um, good luck to you. And come back again for another video. Click subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you soon uh, on the next one. Bye for now.